but what happens in this catch-up is that you first catch up in basic education, primary health, you get healthier, you get small family, you get higher educational level, and it's not like now we McLean thinks that they're only low paid industrial workers with bad salaries in Asia that are uh, taking care of outsourced industry. We are far beyond that. Now we have as many chemists and physics that are graduated from universities in India and China as we have in West Europe and North America together. And they are better because they are more clever from the beginning and they study harder. And Big Pharma is outsourcing like hell to Asia. Synthesizing development of, 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 of drugs and clinical trials. So this very strange situation is what, what Thomas Friedman called the flat world. I'll take away the deselection. You can see the flat world up here. Huh? It's, like, it's like life expectancy is high, but money is still low. So it means that, that that difference in sequence of development of countries is what makes us think that Iran, Vietnam, I, I, I asked Bonniers about Vietnam, Mexico, Iran, Egypt, you take any emerging economy and they think they are, they are 20 to 30 years worse than they are. So life is very easy for a professor in global health. I recommend everyone who wants to be a professor, pick global health, it's very easy. People are so damned ignorant about what has happened. So like being in English literature, you know, political science, people know so much, it's very hard to be a professor. My topic is much easier, much, much easier. Now, we developed this to show the bubbles. What more could we use them for? Look here. I'll show you something here, which is completely different. Never would I think, you know, that, that, that I would, as a professor in public health, I would travel around all oil and gas conferences in West Europe and lecture about the development of the use on oil and gas and energy. For God's sake, I'm the founder of Medicines on Frontier in Sweden. I shouldn't do this. But it so happens that the software that we develop to show the change in demography fits very well to show reserves here. This is oil production on this axis. So Saudi Arabia has a high oil production, eh? and United States have a high oil production. The size of the bubble is oil-proven reserves. So it means that Saudi Arabia has a lot of reserves, but United States doesn't have so many reserves any longer. <laughs> eh? Drill, baby, drill. Eh? So they are going up in Alaska, they are going in the sea, it's, it's soon, it's finished soon, you know. This country, Canada, doesn't have so many research, yet they have, you know, this is a country that has research. Now the, the, this axis shows natural gas production. So the United States also produce a lot of gas. And the colors show natural gas proven reserves. You follow? It's happening. So the question is now, unfortunately, we have not got the Russian data before 97, but here we have them. 97 is like a face-off eh? between, between Russia and the United States here, you know. And what will happen? What will happen? You know, you see, they are falling in oil production, Russia is rising, and here Putin is papa, and here he goes, you know. <laughs> it tells the story. Tells the story very nicely, you know. Or you can hire some consultant analyst which do a lot of, of shit in Excel for you and come out and tell you this story, you know, at, 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 at $25,000, you know, two months later. You know? It's much easier to, to get mine free of charge and just look at it. <laughs> huh? so, and, 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 and the interesting thing is here you can see who are the ones who have gas. Who are the ones who have gas? Yeah, Putin has gas, Iran has gas, and Qatar has gas. From Al Jazeera up to, up to Pravda, that's where they have gas, and that's it. The other have very low gas. They are light blue or they are dark blue, there's no more gas. So that's why. Who has oil reserve? This has oil reserve, this has oil reserve, this has oil reserve, Iran, this has oil reserves, and here is Chavez. I think that one of the driving forces for renewable energy will be security rather than climate. And that's why I think that climate will be safe, because the, the oil addiction is so stupid from a security point of view. And it's amazing for me to see that the United States cannot plan ahead. So how much has West Europe planned ahead? Look here how you can see. We want to scale up this. We take away the big one there. Huh? Oh, first perhaps I should show you 
I should show you. Ali, you can make sort of trails on this. It's quite illustrative to see what's happening with the United States. Huh? United States, you know, they were very proud, had a big production there, you know, and then they, they are just going down, the oil production. They are falling. They have so little left, and it's more and more costly to take it up. So they are falling in oil production, and they don't have reserves which are enough. Now, we take that away, and, and we explore the data here, and, and we, we, we expand this area. Here we are. And then we're very interested in, in, uh, in changing oil production. I would like to see, yeah, perhaps, no, perhaps first I should look at this. Huh? It, it's so fun. I often get carried away. That's why I have to stop me somewhere. Huh? Because you can just see, you know, Norway is there, 2007. Huh? And then you go back and you can see, this is where the story started. You remember, Norwegians used to be polite and humble. And then they, <laughs> then they, and then they had all this oil production. And then it sort of finished and they went for gas and then it's going down. You can see? They already peaked. The oil production in Norway has already peaked. It's on its way down. They're now living on gas. Huh? And it's on its way down. And then you get interest. Let's say, look at United Kingdom, you know, the defender of the free world. What did they do when they, had, they found, oh, North Sea has, has oil. Let's take it up and burn it, you know. And there's gas, so let's take it up. And burn. They're already here on their way back. So the defenders of the free world around the North Sea, they find out, oh, we have oil here. Look here, there's a little, look down there. There's oil down there, they say. Let's take it up and sell it and let's put the money in Lehman Brothers and these strange derivates of things they have, you know. That's much safer. What do China do? China doesn't have oil. They make a hole down here, China, you know. They make a hole, you know. They buy a lot of, of Scania trucks. That's good, you know, to make the hole. And then they buy oil and they put it down. <laughs> They're completely different because they plan 25 years ahead. And they say, what if the United States start a trade war with us? You know, they are so lazy and they just buy our stuff and then they borrow our money. We don't know what this is. It's better that we buy some oil and put it down. Whereas these guys who had oil from the beginning down in the hole, they took it up and sold it. And then they bought stuff from China for the money. And that gave money to China to buy the oil and put it down in their hole instead. So basically, the oil has been taken up. On, it's interesting, you know. Because, I mean, it's a quarter economy. It's about, it's about three months ahead. And the oil is like when the oil field is explored, the whole economic setup is there's nothing else you can do than pump it. Of course, I'm not a specialist, but I'm a person who view this from a side, you know. And, and then you get very interested to see how much oil, take the United Kingdom away, how much oil can Norway do? If I go here, you see you have energy there. Uh, this is free. You can go home and spend the night on this. Huh? So you go down here and you go to oil, and I want to see oil production per person. Because Norway has such a you know, good civil society, they are innovative, they have been doing shipping, they should do well in this modern world without pumping all that oil. You know? And then you, finally, you find out this situation, you know, that you have, you have Norway down here, and now it's per person. And, and, and perhaps we should ask ourselves, how the heck come that Norway is pumping more oil per person than Saudi Arabia? Is it because Saudi Arabia has such a vivid civil society and are so innovative in all different sectors so they can make money on other things, whereas Norwegians can just pump like this, you know, only thing. It's very so why are they in such a hurry to get the oil up? I can't understand it. And they just put it in money instead, which is such a bad thing to have these days, you know, because you never know where it is. Did you know that Norway were pumping more oil per person per year over the last decade compared to Saudi Arabia? Yeah, I mean, Saudis, they get all their money from this. You know? They pay all their hospitals, they do everything. This is very strange. I, and then I asked all these people who do analysis, and extremely little few groups are aware of these relations. So what we actually created here was a way to explore the world, a way to look at the modern world, how it looks like and how it is. Of course, there are some who pump more oil than Norway. It's like United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, and Qatar, but they're sort of apologized. Huh? 
because there's small sandy countries that doesn't have so much health. You know, the advertisement in, in Al Jazeera can't pay for everything in Qatar, so they have to run the oil business. Whereas Norway, why should they be so high? Why don't keep the oil down there as the Chinese do if there come a war? Get the oil up, sell it, and let Putin rule. That seems to be the plan. Now, this was you have to be drastic and to show how you can use this tool. And that's what we agreed to start this with. That the tool we developed to show population change could suddenly be used in oil instead. We just happened by chance to have developed a way of animating statistics, not visualizing, but animating it, that had a much broader application than we never imagined. 